Hey guys, this is Grandmaster Max Sillingworth, and in this video, I'm going to play an unrated game of Three Minute Chess on Chess.com, so that you may learn how to beat players around your level, and also pick up some nice ideas along the way as I explain my thought process. So I'm just doing a seek right now, and you can see that I'm playing against a player in the high 1900s. So I'm going to play the fantasy variation against this Karakhan. I think it's a nice aggressive system that often players can struggle to deal with. F5 is already a very weakening move, which I might exploit with Bishop F4. Just letting him take on E4, so my knight gets a really nice square on F3. Obviously Queen H4 doesn't do anything after G3. I think I'm quite happy to take on D6, because now he has a lot of holes in his uh, dark squares. Um, so I'm waiting for him to take on E4 so I can get my knight in toward E5. I can also play e5 at a later stage. The nice thing about keeping the tension against a, let's say, amateur player is that it means they think quite a bit, and that can you know, make some mistakes, like queen f8, for example. So I'll just continue my development plan, and maybe now I'll think about taking, because I have rook e1 to get an attack on the e5 with the king. That's a pre move. Uh, this make I go knight h3 to keep the initiative with knight g5. If h6, I maybe can play bishop d3 and just develop normally. If he goes g5, maybe I'll try to open up the position somehow. Admittedly, it's not that easy to do so. Uh, I wish I could get a knight to e5. This would be a really nice thing to do in this position. So maybe I can go knight f2 and prepare some h4 or something. Try to get some play going. And I definitely could have played this a lot better, but... Still, black has some problems because he can't play knight d7 without allowing bishop f5. So, we'll play h4 and try and fix some weaknesses in the black position, h5. Uh, one plank me to bring the knight toward g6 and have a chance for kingside attack. Uh, I'll try to play bishop a6. Yeah, he shouldn't have played this because now my knights just get to great squares on the dark squares. I think he can play knight a4 and bring the knight into c5. Support piece coming to e6 potentially. I mean, basically, black I think is just strategically lost in this position because his bishop is really horrible. He wants to try and take on e1 and take on h5, but let's go knight e5 and leave black completely without counterplay. I can even swing the rook to a3 or queen a5 to attack the weakness on a6. Yeah, I might start with rook e3 here, just build up naturally. Uh, yeah, I can also, well. I think the plan I mentioned is pretty effective, really. Uh, an interesting question is if knight d7, which way I should take in this position. I can take a pawn with knight takes d7, bishop takes, and knight takes a6. But part of me feels like there should even be something better in this position. Um, I think maybe knight the uptake that way could also be quite tempting, for example. Um, okay, I guess I will play... Yeah, I'll take this way and try to... Keep him tied up as such. So I go to rook e1 and. Yeah, it doesn't have c5 because I take queen takes and knight takes d7. So I put my queen to a5 as a likely plan. Yeah, this is just desperation on his part. He doesn't really get anything for the exchange. My rook can come into e7. And if rook f7, I might just play queen a5 and just blockade the dark squares completely. Um, I mean, you could try f4, but still rook e7 is pretty strong. So, you can see how effective the fancy variation is. And he was something a little bit different, so my opponent wasn't really ready for it, as he might have been for, say, free knight c3 or free uh, e d5, for example. So he wants to go queen g5, but I can play rook e7. You can sort of see how the fancy goes you know, quite an aggressive system, and it's not so easy for black just to play in a simple, solid way, let's say. Uh, I might go pawn grabbing with queen to a5. You can take h5, but I can go, say, rook to e7, and black doesn't really have a great defense there. Or I can just take some of his pawns, which might be the more practical option. Um, I mean, the main thing is not to give him too much counterplay. You know, I might have done with queen g5, which probably wasn't necessary to allow, but fortunately he did not see it. <clears throat> and yeah, basically I think black is... Uh, I'm just going to lose this plan of charging the acorn forward, to which I don't really see a good defense for black. 
Um, actually, it's one thing I noticed that you know a lot of players struggle to convert a winning position. But if you're not able to keep control and just not give Black any counterplay, it makes it a lot easier to win. Uh, for example, a couple moves earlier, I, you know, rather than allowing Queen G5, I should just you know, put my king to safety with B3, King B2. And then my attack will be a lot more effective. I'll keep pushing this pawn. Nothing in chess, the simple plan is the best one, especially when you're in a winning position. You certainly don't want to make things overly complicated for the opponent and give them lots of unnecessary chances. So, I'm just going to play a7, a8, queen, or, well, unless he resigns first. I probably have some mate with queen d6 somehow, but this will be good enough. So, yeah, that was my game against Eat Dinner. That's a funny name. Uh, so, yeah, I hope you found this useful. That it's giving you a nice system against the Karakhan. And, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.